Eastern time. <clears throat> so we're trying to get done, get it in, get in and get done. With that stream? Yeah, so it should be a good time for um, Europeans. Mm -hmm. um, They'll still complain. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Europeans. Yeah, and so I've been feeling like maybe the other, maybe the middle games book is not quite doing it for me, but I'm, I don't hate the book. So we're going to, but we're going to finish that section that we're, that we've been working on. And then we're going to try out a different one today. We're just going to just try it out. Uh, John Nunn book. Is it the art of the middle game? Understanding the middle game. Oh, understanding. Game. Understanding. And you know. Or understanding chess middle games. Okay. It's like mastering chess middle games, oh. but understanding them. Oh, it's almost the same title. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I mean, the best way to know if it's a good book is just try it out. We mm -hmm. were kind of flipping, looking at it briefly, but we'll just give it a whirl and then f stick with one of those books or maybe find a third one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Who knows? All right. I've refreshed How's it going, it. Market Sands? Hey, Market Sands. I think... Um, <laughs> the key... Your middle name there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? We have four viewers. Quattro. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, it's him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is somebody else getting roasted, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> um, well, what's going on? Some Somebody, we're all excited in US, U.S. of A. Yes. New president. Finally. <laughs> At last. <laughs> <laughs> Jolton Joe Biden. Yay. So. Yeah, everybody called it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seemed like it's like everybody got together and agreed. Okay, now's yes. the time. I'm not sure why they decided. Hey, Raj. Hey, Bishop Takes <laughs> and Nero. Hey, Bishop Takes. Hey, Nero. We were just talking about we have a new president. Yes, pretty soon. Mm hmm. America. America. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Let's see what they're saying over here. We'll come right back. You'd think that uh, Biden would win Pennsylvania because of his, it's his hometown. Mm hmm. Home state. I forgot he was from there even. <laughs> yeah. He's from Scranton. Yeah. Like, uh, like the office. Mm hmm. All right. Okay. He can speak. Hey, Sinbad. And a brick a brick. Hey, yes. Sinbad. A brick a brick. I was just checking the news out for a second. Am I registered in Georgia yet? No. I am not. It's hard to see the... There we go. Oh, okay. Gotta move it over. Yeah, it does have to How's be. it going, Kangaroo? Hey, Kangaroo, how's it going? Why is Trump leaving the White House? Because it is forbidden. Nice. <laughs> um... Pretty funny. Oh, you're in Pennsylvania, Market Sands? <clears throat> Where do you live in Pennsylvania? I used to live in um, Philadelphia. Philadelphia Freedom. Mm -hmm. That is my favorite place I ever lived. It's always sunny there, I heard. <laughs> also, I lived in York. Oh, you're near Allentown? I came there once. Seems like I ran a 10K up there. Um, How come uh, Kangaroo doesn't have a purple star there, but he does in his other messages? Um, oh, yeah. Weird, right? Mm, that is weird. I almost thought it was like a different person like with a similar name mm -hmm. as Kangaroo. Yeah, Twitch. Just, yeah, it's so glitchy. It was a Twitch glitch, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, jo Georgia viewers um, or voters... That's exciting that um, it's blue for the first time in a really long time. Hey, it's Ken. How's it going? I think Twitchers is a word. I'm always twitching, so, you know. <laughs> hey, Ken. Um, I did not see that Sinbad. Maurice Ashley has a Twitch channel. Yeah, I saw. I heard about it. Yeah? Did you go look? <laughs> no. <laughs> Obviously not. <laughs> but that was funny. Well, I have nothing against the man. Mm-hmm. That makes one of us. Yeah? What did he do? I don't want to talk about it Aww. on stream. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, come on, we want gossip. I'll tell you uh, off stream. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> I, I mean, I only ever met him once, so. <clears throat> Anyway, okay, what else are people saying? Nothing too exciting. So maybe we should start. Um, I can play someone, or we could even do Hannah Brain. What do you prefer? We can do Hannah Brain. Okay. If you want. All right, if somebody will send us a challenge, uh, five minute unrated, we'll play you in Hand and Brain, and then Spencer will an- analyze and tell us what we did wrong. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Blood. You've been known to be twitchy as well. Hey, we got a challenge, but I didn't hear the thing. Is your sound off? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Perhaps, let me see about maybe that. maybe it's just really low. No, oh, no. it's on. Oh, I heard that. Oh, and now it did it. It was like a delayed sound. No, that was a different thing. That was a oh, pop-up oh, over Oh, that was there. a different thing. All right, well. Well, we still have one. Let's go for it, huh? Okay. You want to be the hand, I guess? Yeah. On. Yes, it's a very old name. Bishop. Pawn. Pawn. He had a Kovic. Um, pawn. Let me see. Seems like I shouldn't go slow. <laughs> yeah, come on. Let's move forward. Let's go already. All right. Um. Go us. At least our opponent's only 1,200, so spending 27 mm-hmm. min- seconds is okay. All right, I'm, Night. <laughs> I'm back in. I'm all good. Everything's fine. Night. Hey, John, John. Queen. Yes, Trump's Twitter is different than every what everybody else says, somehow. Pawn. Pawn. Bishop. Go us. Oh, so for real, what is going on? Well, you Biden know. Won. And Trump is lying. <laughs> King. Pawn. Yeah, I mean, all Trump does is lie, so. All I do is lie, 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 no matter (laughs) what, what. Knight. Two bishops, a lot else for the opponent. Mm-hmm. Knight. Pawn. How's it going, Star Princess? Too anxious to celebrate, yes. How can you be so casual about what? About Trump lying? Rook. I mean, you haven't been I mean, paying I've, attention for a while. <laughs> I've had a long time to come to grips with that situation. What am I supposed to do? Be all emotional? And... All right. I, shockingly, <laughs> Trump's lying. Somehow. Every day I have to be shocked by that, I guess. <laughs> 
But um, I, I know what you're saying. It's Stop spending 30 seconds a move. All right. Rook. It's a statement about the world. Oh, shit. Should have thought a little longer on that one. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> well, you shouldn't browbeat me. Then I wouldn't have moved. Oh, yeah, we'll just lose on time. Hastily. That's better. Rook. No, losing on time is way better than browbeating. It's not You're that, right. but browbeating doesn't solve the problem. It doesn't... Well, moving faster would. Well, I was talking. Well, I can't move. I, you know, I know. I'm, I'm was, the brain. I was talking to people. <laughs> I'm the only one who can say. Pawn. I still like white here, even though I lost. Yeah. Yeah, we have the mock seed, you know, to win. Mm-hmm. Moxie's I still mostly. think it's possible. Sure. Our opponent's pretty low rated. You crazy women. <laughs> crazy. Pawn. Rook. Bishop. Pawn. Guys asking for the ban. I already said pawn, by the way. Okay. There's a pre move. <laughs> um. Go us. We're the best. Almost caught up on time. Bishop. I just lost to somebody rated 100 points lower than me who's playing blindfolded. Pawn. King. Well, that was okay. I don't know what to do. Good move. Yeah. <laughs> Could be there and there. <laughs> Uh, bishop. You always give up at chess, yes. That's the best way to improve. Mm -hmm. What's the question? He lost the game, so should he give up? I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> Try video games. They're way more fun. All right, we can still win because our opponent's letting us win on time, I guess. <laughs> it's kind of nice. We should win because we have more isolated pawns. Right. So, like, that's, you know, a moral victory. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You got it, Jack. <laughs> Bishop. I don't know. Bishop, I guess. <laughs> you got to wait for me to say. Oh, sorry. I Rook. forgot. Rook. I forgot. It's okay. Rook. King. Pawn. Oh. 
What do you freaking again? <laughs> Pawn. <laughs> King. <laughs> Pawn. Bishop. 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 King. Pawn. Bishop. 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 Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Bishop. Sorry. I just forget. Bishop. 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 King. 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 Oh. King. Pawn. 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 King. 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 Good job. Oh, well, you cheated a little, but <laughs> still good. Yeah, e I kept forgetting. Win. I'm sorry. Like, I just forget. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a look at this great game that we won. No, that was terrible. No, it was pretty good. <laughs> In some ways, it was good. All right, well, GG. It's that like, was fun. It's like Wabi Sabi. Was that you had a... What, who had a Kovic? Was that you, Imhadi? Is that the same? So what? what's the problem with Black playing Bishop F5? It's not a bad move, but it does have one problem. Oh yeah, the B pawn. Right. So what do you? What do I want to do then? You're gonna get your queen over there. So what's the move? Um, is it C four? Yes, you almost did it. You're I as did. close as possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, C four. Because oh. then Queen B three not only attacks this, but also puts pressure here. Yeah. Which Darn. is nice. White's even better here, I think. Mm -hmm. Now it should be equal. This is all good. Okay, this move's very anti-positional move. Yeah, I wanted B4. Now you're talking. Controlling everything. This move weakens here quite a lot. Oh, yeah. So, in fact, this is a strong move because now we can't castle. Because then we, we lose it. So we're significantly worse after C4. That was a very anti-positional move. Gotta play okay. B4. All right. Yeah, see, just switch those pawns around side to side. <laughs> I like that. Luckily, he didn't punish us, so now we're back to equal, or maybe we're worse. Yeah, we're probably a little worse here, but it's not a big deal. This move wasn't good. I, I wanted you to go there, but it's not right. I shouldn't have said knight. I should have just said pawn here. Also, here I could have said bishop, but I didn't see it until now. So I should have done that. <laughs> Didn't see that one. Right, this isn't good just because of this move, but it's okay. Yeah, then this, I mean, come on, he went here last move. Like, what are you doing? Some, luckily, we only lost a pawn out of this. He should probably take with the E pawn, but he took with the C pawn. Now, I actually wanted you to double up, so when he goes here, we can do that. Okay. And then we get some counterplay on the queen side, you know. That's why he should have played e-takes, because if this pawn's here, he controls us a lot on b5. And then we can't get queen side counterplay. This was terrible. Awful. Awful stuff there. Oh, yeah, so here I want you to play f3, even though never play f3. <laughs> but our back rank is very weak. Right? We're like getting mated here. Mm -hmm. So we play f3, we can use our king because it's in an endgame. Uh, you want to use your king in the endgame, uh, okay. of course. I didn't know which pawn maybe was. Yeah, I just need to get the king out because this is awful. Mm -hmm. Like I'd rather our king be up here. That's that's important to get your king active in the endgame. That's uh, an important thing to remember to do. Now we're lost, but our opponent played very slowly, so we won. It's like the opposite of, it's like what Karen would do. Also, stop trading everything when you're dead lost. You traded this, then you traded all the bishops. You like tried as hard as you could to trade bishops. <laughs> like, don't is, trade bishops. It is true that I do that, but the thing with the rooks, I thought it was might get mated. Don't worry about it. 
I mean, you won't get mated if one rook stays on the back row. Yeah. As long as you always have one rook on the back row, you're fine. Because it's never going to be mate. How could it possibly be mate? So you just lift the rook or do any, just do anything because you have no time. Yeah, okay. But yeah, don't trade rooks and trade bishops into a lost king and pawn endgame. Hey, dancing tortoise. I thought knight takes b3 was better than taking with the pawn. Well, knight takes b3 is like a little timid. You know, I want to play pawn takes and I have an open file and then I have a pawn break, you know. I'm threatening this as well, so, you know, it's this is a little bit more aggressive. But, I don't know, knight takes might be okay, it just doesn't seem like the knight's good there anyway. Seems like my rook's better here. Mm -hmm. Plus, yeah. if b4, then we're controlling a lot of queenside. Okay, yeah, I was wondering which way I should take. Yeah, I mean, it's not, you could take either way. I, I just wanted to play it takes. You know, that, that decision mattered very little considering mm -hmm. all the other blunders that <laughs> the opponent and we played. I mean, even I made a big mistake. Like here, I should have said bishop at this point, of course. I mean, it's too obvious now. Because mm. king e7, we fork the rook and bishop. Although that's complicated, actually. You could take here, attack the guy, and then... Oh, the knight's not trapped, though. We can always go to g6. Yeah, he played h6, f6, so we should attack the white squares. But I didn't see this until right now, so I couldn't suggest it then. Good game. So what do you think? Uh, maybe we can start the book, or did you want to play this guy? A hand and brain um, game? We, we could play one more. We want. are going to look at two books, Mark, it sounds. That's why. <laughs> An ambitious stream. <laughs> yeah, we, I'm not completely thrilled with the Panchenko, but... I like it a lot, actually. And in um, fact, I think that this particular section about these sacrifices on D5 were very helpful for me because I like to play black in the Sicilian. Yeah. And so I'm always on the lookout for my opponent's sacrifice like mm -hmm. that now. Yeah, cool. But, um, mm -hmm. well, if you don't, you know, knight this is specifically like a Sicilian little portion, I, I would say. <laughs> You'll get some coffee now. Yeah, I mean, I thought it just <laughs> can't hurt to try out another book. and then. Yeah. But it's pretty high level, I would say, So the Panchenko book. Yeah, but we're not completely bailing on it, so we're going to finish the section that mm -hmm. we were in, and then we're going to try out the new book, and then we'll just think about it. See what you guys yeah. think, see what Spencer thinks, etc. I mean, I've actually read that John Nunn book, and mm -hmm. I think it's really good. So mm -hmm. I'm going to be happy either way. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. All righty, so let's go. So we're playing him? Yeah, do, do you, you want to drive this time? All right, I can be the hand this time. Yeah. Remember to play fast, okay? Okay. Okay, pawn. Knight. Bishop. Pawn. Pawn. We're doing great. Bishop. This is like the last game, but colors reversed. Yeah. You can't tell because it's symmetrical. So. <laughs> um, king. Go us. The Levin Fish Sicilian. Interesting. I heard of it. Night. Isn't that a, a variation in the dragon, or is eleven fish a totally different thing? Bishop. Queen. I play that in the dragon all the time, it says random moves. Rook. Yeah, the line in the dragon. Yeah, I've seen it before, the Levin fish variation of the dragon. Oh, sorry. 
Nej. Not that I've ever played that variation, but so I've heard of it. Falling asleep here. Come on. I'm oh, sorry, sorry. Pawn. Pawn. Um. Queen. Doing great. Rook. Like almost everybody in the world would prefer black. Rook. Rook. How's it going, Hoin Superman? Good to see you as you always. Hey, Hoin Superman, Rook. Get on up. Get on the scene. Like a chess machine. Um, pawn. Pawn. Um, King. Gotta speed it up here. Okay. Um, um, Bishop. Every night move looks so good. <laughs> um, night. Rook. 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 Um. 
night. Rook. Rook. Knight. Rook. Rook. Pawn. Pawn. King. Go carrion. King. King. Knight. Um, pawn. 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 Um, pawn. Now I'm on my own. Okay. Oh, fair enough. Hey, Ralph Wickham. How's it going? Good game. Well, I'm not good, K West Star. <laughs> but I, I think I'm a little better than my rating. Hey, Shinley62. Hey, this is Spencer. Well, I'm thinking that, um, I guess, okay, we'll analyze this and then get right on into the lesson. Thanks, Market Sands, for 200 bits. Yay, thank you, Market Sands. Hey, Petro hey, hey Pat Petrosius. <laughs> Pat Sirius. <laughs> This move is actually kind of bad here because uh, c4 is extra strong. Right? It's the same idea exactly. Mm -hmm. It's actually extra strong here. Sort of a tempo down because you moved your knight and he didn't move his knight. Okay. So this is actually kind of bad for black. If you want to play with bishop f5, you got to do it on move two, mirror him. Okay, I see. But he didn't punish you. He did like how you did. You played c3 instead of c4. Mm hmm. So now it's just boring. This move makes no sense, of course. So he went back. Like how he went back. That's good. That's good. A5, yes. I didn't know if that's the pawn move you wanted, but that's what we have to do, yes. So now here we can win a pawn with a tactic. Not even really much of a tactic, right? Mm -hmm. And that was actually... You could have taken this for like 30 turns. <laughs> Seriously, watch after this. Now every move this is hanging. Yeah. <laughs> like every move, look, it's hanging every move. Well here he hung another pawn, so he took a different one. Mm. Still every move that's hanging. And then finally said bishop. Now you actually, uh, now he could go here and do this because our rook isn't attacking his knight. So he actually could have tried to win his pawn back. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe we can go back. I don't know, it seems like... Oh, no, we can go here, x -clam. No, no, he can take, yeah. And protect his bishop. But instead he went there, doing nothing. And now we're just very easily winning. The guy decided to hang all of his pawns. Hey, Julian. Julian, how's it going? 
I don't know. Oh, you wanted knight here, I guess. I actually didn't see that. I played mm -hmm. here so I could fork him. Mm -hmm. But obviously we should just move our pawns. Okay. Yeah, so I mean your pawn is hanging, so say pawn so we can move it. Okay. And so dude, so knight. Now he stepped up into a trick. So now after here, if he takes, we can fork him. But then he said rook, so I had to go here. <laughs> <laughs> Which is still very easily winning. Yeah, Chester 908, we know. Um, Biden won. After here, <laughs> you should say knight so I can go there. That'll end the game. What do you think? <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, that'll, that's going to be too easy. But it's still very easy, so we won. <laughs> Although our technique wasn't exactly perfect, but... I did pretty well with the extra queen. Mm hmm Yeah. I'm good at Without much time, too. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could do it in four seconds or so pretty comfortably. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how, how have you been doing, Julian? Nice. Jules is in the house? Oh, he's saying he hasn't seen Ken in a while. Um, yeah, is the... Hey, by the way, is the... Um, I am a Pokemon master. It's a trap, yes. <laughs> Is it St. Louis Chess Club? Is it still up and running? I think it is, isn't it? Mm. They just closed down that one time briefly. Right. Mm. So I'm pretty cold. I don't know about you. I'm a little chilly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you take more challenges or is the stream ending? No, the stream's just getting going. Yeah, we'll <laughs> just analyze a study from a book here. Mm -hmm. As the title says, we have two books that we're studying from. <laughs> Can't get better than that. Maybe three books. but So we'll look at some of the books, and then if we have time at the end, which we won't, Karen will play some more challenges. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're just going to stream for a couple of hours today, and then, uh, which is our usual mm -hmm. amount. Yeah, which... we'll finish up this section in this book, then move on to the next book. Yeah, we're just going to compare books. So feel free to say... This you know, book which sucks. Book you like I hate this book. Better. <laughs> <laughs> this book's great, but I still hate it. <laughs> yeah, we're doing okay, Julian. We opened our club back up. Um, soft opening. Soft opening, two nights a week, and. Um, it's like the exchange French, soft <laughs> opening. So I have to kind of see whether we're going to try to, to expand. Mm -hmm. Unclear. Dubious. <laughs> well, it seems like. Um, and COVID got went up a little bit again. I don't know. Just see how it yeah. goes. Oh, they only let in eight at a time for two hours. And they sanitize between groups. Interesting. It's a lot of work. No, we haven't looked at Sarah Wan's strategy book, Ralph. But um, definitely, that's an idea. I yeah, just... Sarah Wan's books are pretty good. And they're yeah. aimed at a lower level. Oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah. I felt like the Panchenko... Some of it was interesting. But some of it was a little bit too hard. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but I definitely would consider the Sarah one. Yeah, we don't have the staff to monitor, you know, to let people in, view at a time, and to sanitize. We're not, you know, just can't be doing all that, to be honest. We'd have to raise our prices drastically. All right, so this is White to Play, Kasparov Salov, White to Play, from 1989. It's White's turn. Mm -hmm. White to move. Any other? Are we still on the D5? Perhaps. Uh <laughs> How's it going, 74? 74, 74. Um, I lost my game, um, Pet Serious. Oh, against Bad Brad? No, against the um, 2100 Oh yeah. right, right. It was I got confused. Yeah, I got confused. I had a good. Brad. I saw the tactic too, but there were two different ways to say basically the same tactic. I didn't. I for, didn't see it the other way, so I had to resign <laughs> after a move. But, but he he complimented me and said, "Wow, you're really underrated." But I lost. We anyway. You said white to move, and it's probably maybe the same. 
<laughs> <laughs> this does look like a position that's ripe for knight d5, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. The guy's king is still in the center. Mm -hmm. And it'll even take him an extra tempo to get castled because he hasn't even developed his bishop yet. Right. And indeed, mm -hmm. Kasparov, who mm -hmm. will often have a hedgehog formation with black, obviously understands this. Mm -hmm. The idea of creating a barrier in this way can be carried out over in various forms of a Sicilian structure. The white pawns are already on c4 and e4, which makes the barrier even more effective. White goes bravely onto the attack. Knight d5. Mm -hmm. Kasparov was a pretty brave attacker, you'd have to admit. Queen b8. White has the advantage after e takes d. e takes d, check. King d8. Rook e1. Or, if instead of king d8, bishop e7. Knife f5. Knight e5. Looks logical. Give me that. Big check. King f8. If king d8, bishop b2. Not that, you know, that's much different. But king f8 attacks the knight. So you might have to have time for bishop d2, right? Mm -hmm. Bishop h6 instead. And now bishop h3 or rook a e1 gives white more than enough compensation. It says it's much better for white. I mean, black's position is pretty bad. His white squares are extremely weak. And this barrier that he's talking about, because we have the c-pawn, this is what he said, it's even more effective. It's cutting the board in half more securely because of that c-pawn. You, know, you, can't, you can't take the pawn, of course. This is enabling moves like bishop h3, which would otherwise maybe perhaps hang the pawn. But yeah, f5 is weak. He's got three isolated pawns. He got two pawns for a piece, and his rook is trapped, and his king is weak. So it's, it seems like a lot of comp. <laughs> you know, it's mm -hmm. a lot of things that I said. And Salov agreed. Salov's like, no way. I'm sure Kasparov played solid bishop b2 and not tactical moves like knight d5. <laughs> right. Wait, where are you reading? Just the chat. Oh. It was Pat Sirius, he said it. <clears throat> oh, I see. You can't hardly read his name. Queen mm -hmm. b8. And Kasparov's like, all right, just rook d1. Keep it steady. Hey, Pam. The best move is e5, which is unacceptable. You wouldn't play e5. So g6. Oh, Pam's in the house? Mm-hmm. <laughs> How's it going, Pam? <laughs> g6, a fly move. But here comes some dark square pressure because you weaken the dark squares. I'm going to watch this. Boom, shakalaka. Bishop takes f6. Didn't expect that one, did you? Knight takes f6. If bishop takes f6, knight takes, knight takes, what's the move here? Um... Sure. Julian agreed that that position was a lot of compensation. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Be very difficult to handle black there. Hang hey, Ralph Wiggum's pretty on the ball today, huh? Unlike the uh, the cartoon character Ralph Wiggum, who would not who would not understand the position very well, I believe. Mm -hmm. Oh. I'm gonna go down. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good, sweetie. Thank I'll you. Just clarify that you wanted a coke. Yes, thank you. Um, I don't know. Well, what about some forcing moves? Well, I was looking at. That just didn't seem right, though. What were you looking at? You won't even tell me. Oh, I was it's looking. It's like a secret. Well, no, it's not a secret. Secret I was move. At, no, I was looking at. <laughs> I was looking at E five. Yes, yes, E five. But. How come that doesn't work? As in concerns. Such as? Okay, well, if, um, let's see what happens if they take with the pawn. Right. Then. You got it, Pam. I guess you take their bishop. Yeah, mm -hmm. then you'll take the e-pawn back with the queen. Oh, yeah, okay. Because the queen is uh, defending both. So e5 is the move. The um, Oh, yeah. He gives can, both variations here. Knight. For example, you take here, he, you take on f6. 
bishop can move, but queen e4. This is good because the pawn is really good. And this is also pretty weak. This is a really good pawn. Like if you, you for example, you can't really castle, right? <sighs> Won't let me because I set up the board. Oh, yeah. okay. You can't really castle though, because I'll play queen h4, attacking the bishop and threatening queen h6 with forced mate. So castling's not gonna work. Queen h4 would win material. The bishop can take the fiend cut out bishop, you're correct. The suspenser. That's exactly this variation. Open the center when your opponent's king is castled, or your king is castled, rather, and your opponent's isn't. That's correct, Ivysaur. Yes. But also he looks at this variation. D takes E. Bishop B7. This is what we talked about. Mm -hmm. And then here. He takes it a little further. Queen E7 to defend the knight. If king E7, you get walloped here. Shakalaka part two, as you might hear in the NBA. Somebody wrote that in the chat. Hef takes and rook d6. Indefensible e6 pawn here. And the position collapses. You probably just lose your knight at best. You'll lose back your knight and you've lost pawns and you're getting mated. So queen e7 might be a better defense in that case. But knight c6 x clan. Oh, that's nasty. Mm -hmm. Takes, it's a back rank issue. Not takes, there's a knight on f6 issue, because your queen's attacked and I'm going to take your knight. Knight c6 ends it. Ends all resistance. One problem is you can't, like, move your queen and then say, oh, you take my knight, or take your knight, because then your rook is a goner, too. Oh, yeah. So you don't have time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love a good knight c6 tactic here. Mm -hmm. What are people talking about? The bishop can take the... Yeah, we talked about that variation. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, we're all caught up there. Mm -hmm. I was making sure to look. So yeah, e5 is a good move in that variation. So bishop takes, uh, knight takes, knight takes, e5 is strong. So he played knight takes instead on f6. But now his b-pawn is hanging, so he took it. So that was the point of bishop takes f6. Bishop g5 takes f6, very alert by Kasparov. Of course, Kasparov calculates all of his forcing moves no matter what. Mm -hmm. And he could just calculate hundreds and hundreds of moves. So you would expect him to find it. But I wouldn't be so confident that this is the right idea, you know, in this position. But it's because of the variation where bishop takes, knight takes, and e5 is strong. Because now you have to play knight takes, but then give me that pawn. Mm -hmm. Rook d8. So Kasparov won a pawn, and... Uh, it doesn't mean that he has to consolidate and then win, you know, slowly, right? He can still keep it going. Here's the book, Ken. Mastering Chess Middle Games by Penchenko. Make sure you can see it up there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kasparov is getting the Ben Fist Pounds. What? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what that's talking about? I don't know what that is. Okay. <laughs> Ben something pounds. So what's the move? Come on, white to play. Fist pounds. White to play, you said? Yeah, white okay. to play. <clears throat> yeah, it's a pretty good book, but it's tough, Ken. It's a tough book. As you could probably tell, the variations are difficult. You can just put it right here for How's me. it going, super baguette? Thank you, sweetie. Baguette. Mm. So many moves arms like Donkey Kong. That is something Donkey Kong would do. I don't know if my uh, if my father knows about. It. I'm sure he knows Donkey Kong exists, especially because of Futurama. Oh, he does that thing where he goes like this. And he goes, I don't know. Maybe. That's what he means. Maybe. <laughs> Come on, Karen, find the move. All it's right. It's so easy. Oh, no, okay. no, I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How many chess books do you have, Spencer? That's a good question. I uh, I have a bookshelf that's full of chess books. It's also full of Pokemon cards, though. So I would guess maybe between 15 and 30. Although I've, I have owned more chess books, but I've donated them to this chess club and also the St. Louis Chess Club. One time Kasparov was in town, so I, uh, I got him to sign a book and then I donated it to the chess club in St. Louis. <laughs> So now there's a book in their library that has Kasparov's signature. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. 
How's it going, Max and Jack? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Karen? Me? Yeah, struggling? Yeah. So, okay, so it's it's not I mean, like an E5 thing. You like E5 again? I don't know. Let's see, what was the last move? Rook D8. Mm-hmm. White to me. Ben's not here, F3, JK. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Yeah, the can of soda had something to say there. With its dying breath. I curse Zoidberg. Yeah, always play knight d5. <laughs> Again, yes. <laughs> that would be an interesting move, actually. But he did go for your your intuitive pawn break. E5? Yeah. Yeah, that seemed like a good place to go. The attack continues in a single breath. Black defends inventively, but still loses. Let's look at the variations, huh? He played bishop takes g2. He could have tried this. So the point is we opened up our bishop, so now we have this move. Forkton. Mm -hmm. Where, okay, you'll take it to not lose material, but now my white square bishop's pretty, pretty good. Gotta go here. See if I, I mean, this is enough to say that I like white already, but we can continue it further. Mm -hmm. Here. Okay. Not 100% sure why that specific move, but that might be best anyway. Whatevs. I mean, I already like white. White at least won back the pawn, right? And white already even was up a pawn, so white's just a back to a pawn up. And he has three connected pass pawns. Oh, he does have this, but now you're winning here. And wins. Let's see. Let's try to defend with black. I guess I'd go here so that I can meet a back rank issue with the knight block. But then there's knight d7. Which forces you either to go here and get mated in two, mm -hmm. or go here and lose your queen to a discovered attack. And now you can't, you can't even try this because I can take here or go check and win the queen that way. All right. <clears throat> So he can't take the bishop here, so he's done for. Yeah. Even still, I feel... Oh, no, no. See, I was thinking you could even move your bishop. But obviously this is hanging. So, yeah, you have to actually win by these tactics. This is an important variation. Queen c7, now I understand. Queen c... It's just a skewer, obviously. It's just a skewer. But we can save our bishop tactically. You can't take the bishop because this wins by force. You're awesome, Pam. <laughs> yes. So, the suspenser says... Or I'm sorry, was it the suspenser? Somebody said about... Oh, it was John John. He said, I didn't like e5 because of bishop takes g2, which is actually what the guy played. But here's the deal, is I take this, and now you've got two bishops hanging, John John. Although I also have a knight hanging. So it's just complicated. <laughs> also, this mm -hmm. move might be in the air, right? That move might look pretty good. I like that move. Let's see if he does it. Yes, he does. Look, bishop f6, knight takes immediately. Wow. So now Kasparov sacrificed a piece, and if he takes this piece, this is hanging. If he, if he goes here to counterattack mate, then you'll take with the bishop, saving your bishop, by tra well, trading it instead of losing it. c5 x clam. Kasparov's like, I'm never going to slow down, right? You can't stop me. You're not man enough. That's what he's saying. Every move sacrifice and, and a dynamic <laughs> move. Yeah, 96 I was expecting, as I predicted. C5 x clam keeps the initiative going and protects his knight. So now the bishop's hanging for real. For real. So he moved it, I guess? Yeah, he did. He went to b7. Bishop b6 c6 even, would be met by rook e1, with no other variation after this. This is devastating, because uh, if you go here, I can take this even. Well, I might even have better than that, honestly. But that looks pretty decisive already. Mm -hmm. Like, even this move's interesting. But okay, rook f8, I don't, I don't believe it. So yeah, I think it would be here. Yeah, you can't take my guy, because I'll take your guy with mate. 
You could you could sack the exchange. No, you can't even do this because it's still mate. Yeah, it's still mate. And other than this, I don't... Well, okay, this is the same, right? They both defend the bishop, but it's the same move that would beat them. Mm -hmm. Can't go here because I take with the knight, and there's no other way to defend it. So we're done calculating that variation. Bishop f3, rook d3. Rook f8. Rook e1. Similar problems, huh? Yeah, c5 was x-clam because it, it introduces this threat. Right. Which will win the bishop and mate. And of course, Kasparov was calculating this when he played e5. He thought bishop g2, e takes d, knight e6. And then I've got c5 here. And I'm Gary Kasparov, so I can just calculate all this. <laughs> That's how I do it. <clears throat> X-clam. Can't take with the queen, obviously, frankly. So he goes here. But now I guess it's rook c1. Yes, yes, rook c1 drew you into the pin attraction you went here Oof. two bishops what else well white has everything else <laughs> <laughs> the initiative the safer king the better pawn structure even <laughs> not that that matters yeah and uh, even an extra pawn so yeah this is this is resignable how could you keep playing this against kasparov insulting this is actually resignable. <clears throat> he can even trade queens. Like, are you kidding me? Well, you can't really take because I win a bishop then. So. Oh, Kasparov got nasty here. Resigns. If you take the queen and I take your queen, you lose a bishop. Mm -hmm. This bishop's hanging. It can't move. If you defend it, I take your other bishop. <laughs> <laughs> How rude is that? And then after that, I'll just take everything on e7 and win the king and pawn again. No, I, I would never win that way. <laughs> You're open exchange. You don't need to do that. So yeah, Kasparov got nasty. Knight d5. Rook d1 is also like x-clam, like just keeping <clears throat> the position with the hanging knight. And bishop g5 takes f6. Really smart, because he saw that e5 variation of bishop takes, knight takes, knight takes e5 that we analyzed. And so he knew he could pick up the pawn. Then here, th this is what's nice. He could do all this, get to this position, and stop calculating. So then once he's here, it's like, okay, now I can start calculating again. And then he's like, and then he had time to see this e5 with the idea of knight e6 and c5. Very dynamic play. And it's it's over after, and c6, another nice shot. The end. <clears throat> yeah, he just tore uh -huh. him up. Oh, thanks, Pam. Five way. subs. Yay. Awesome. Thank you, Pam. I said way. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Thank no you, way. Pam, for all of those gift subs. Pam's the best. <laughs> yes. Yay. Go, Pam. All right. How about the next one, huh? Yeah. I love seeing Kasparov just destroy people, though. <laughs> that is my favorite. I would say Kasparov is my favorite player to analyze their games, for sure. Yeah, that's pretty cool. He just uh, wrecks people like that all mm -hmm. the time. Penchenko. I've never met him. I'm, I'm seen him once. I actually distance. did meet him a couple yeah. times. We spoke a l very little bit. Okay, so this is a, a game from the author, right? Penchenko. Yeah, Alexander oh, yeah. Penchenko. Pretty cool. He has white against Sakis. Left Sakis is no joke. <clears throat> yes. And Sakis goes for the interesting b6. This I remember this was played in Robson Komsky from the US Championship. I don't even know what year. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Robson just played very boring and normal and got an advantage. It was kind of funny. But I will say the best move here. Panchenko didn't play it, I don't think. Oh, he did, he did. Yeah, in, <clears throat> in the game, Robson played like this and this and that and Castle's queen side. He was like a little better. But bishop g5 is a good move to not really refute this opening. But the idea is if you put your knight here, I'll just take it. So it's kind of a, a weird move. You wouldn't normally just put your bishop there in outer space like that, you know, doing nothing basically. Mm -hmm. But that's the idea. You can't really go here without letting me take. And you can't go here and develop. You could try g6 maybe. I don't, I don't really know the theory on that. Let's see what he does. He just plays knight d7 to prepare this way. Bishop c4. Hey, Sandy dog. 
Old Sandy Dog. <laughs> Knight D B five is an interesting move, he indicates, but he played Bishop C four. A six preventing that. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's right. I remember this in a book. They said even black should maybe play a six here. And I was like, what? Hmm. A six here, but I guess it's to stop knight db5. Oh, I see. Yeah, John, John, I'm so behind on emotes. It's scandalous. There will be more. It is a scandal, though. It is. <clears throat> Things are tough right now. And he goes castle kingside exclam. Castle's queenside was also possible, but the king is totally safe on the king side. That's true. I mean, he has an open C file because mm. it's a Sicilian. And mm-hmm. he played B5 also because it's Sicilian. So it makes more sense to castle kingside. And anyways, this king's going to be weak here no matter what. Because he's, you know, four moves away from castling. <laughs> Literally four moves away from castling. It's ridiculous. Yeah. <clears throat> knight GF6. Also, if B4, knight A4. E6. Bishop B3. Knight GF6. Just takes it, because you can't take with the knight now because of that. So you don't have to oh, take yeah. with the pawn. Oh, I see. Big fork. Mm-hmm. Forkton. So playing b4, knight a4 helps white, obviously, because then you can't go here without the fork. Longer moves are better. Long equals good. Hmm? Uh, What's the point behind knight b5, right? That's actually a good question, right? <clears throat> I mean, well, the immediate threat is to just take it, right? Because it's pinned. But I was kind of wondering if he goes here, what the point is. Mm-hmm. But I don't really want to have a theoretical discussion here. You could look this up <laughs> in a book or with an engine easily. Yeah, Moobot like, seems all tell you what to do. mad at Julian. All right, how dare you, Julian? <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever you did. Call him that spam. Oh, because <laughs> it doesn't like fens. It doesn't like when you put the fan. It just thinks it's spam. Oh, that's right. Uh, you got to stop or uh, untime out Julian there. <laughs> there. Thank you, Kangaroo. You, you're already on it. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't let you enter in fans for some reason. <clears throat> I don't know why. Mm-hmm. It, it thinks it's like gobbledygook. It kind of does look like gobbledygook. Yeah. <laughs> Mumbo, perhaps. Jumbo, perhaps not. All right, so he plays knight gf6 so that if you take, you can actually take with the knight now. And e6. There are some cases where we first break up the king's pawn cover on e6, then bring a piece to d5. Wow. But yeah, okay, the guy is still far from castling, right? And now it's impossible even. So you gotta punish him. He can't just move around and do nothing and he gets developed and castled and black's better. You gotta go in on him. Going all in. Queen c5. Bishop e7, question mark, e5. End of variation. Hmm. So if you take it, we take this. And then we win. <clears throat> that's pretty obvious mm-hmm. then uh okay if you move the knight or something ridiculous right so he played queen c5 this is getting out of the pin and, and thereby you know weakening e5 right because then we could you could even just take with the queen i guess also it hits the bishop i just noticed knife d5 so he sacrificed on e6 then played knight d5 instead of sacrificing with knight d5 this is a little bit of a twist. I had noticed he got he got it in there now. Yeah, but why is he showing us that fan? Okay. Maybe he mentioned it, but we couldn't see because Mubot was so fast with the timeouts. <laughs> <laughs> so quick with those timeouts. Knight d5. Bishop takes d5. And e takes. So he did create the barrier after all. Like we were talking about in the oh, other yeah. examples. As well as cutting the enemy communication... White has an outpost on e6, where the bishop is ideally placed. That is a pretty good bishop. It would be tough to put it on a better square. Castle and queenside. Rook d3 with a little threat. Yes. Now he plays a very important move. I would also call it sort of a standard move. So I was hoping you could find <clears> it, or maybe somebody in the chat 
has got okay. it. So why? Let's see. Oh, Julian was showing where he learned long moves are good. A lot of joke answers as usual. I like it. That isn't all. That isn't a whole PGN, Pam. It's uh, it's the Fen. Unless you were joking, it's kind of hard to tell. <laughs> it's hard for me to know. But yeah, the Fen is just one position, and that all uh, that whole thing correlates to one position. So it's it's not even a whole game. <laughs> yeah, the liberal media, right, Julian? <laughs> Fen is in Fen Beingold, exactly. <clears throat> so, would you have any candidate moves? Um, I don't know. I was looking at Bishop E three. What else? Um, then I was looking at, um, oh yeah, Nigel short game. Yes, yes. <laughs> you could go, um, I would enable as a pawn. What were you going to say? Don't be chicken about it. Oh no, I didn't see the bishop. I don't I'm even know chicken. what you're talking about. I, I know. know. Well, let me, I'm just figuring it out. I know, then you could do, maybe try to do something tricky up there with the knights and the bishops capturing, but I couldn't figure out it. I can't even follow you. You won't even tell me the moves. Okay, well, I'm saying, like, if you took, for example, I'm not suggesting this, but bishop d7, mm -hmm. then, um, but it's just trades. It's a bunch of trades. So. All right, rook d7. I mean, I would analyze that variation. I just, I looked. Yeah. So, I mean, you're like, it seems like you're too shy to say it, but <laughs> I would look at that variation too. I'm not saying it's the best either, but I would say, for example, bishop takes, we could take this too. Right. And then we could go queen e8 and try to get some mate action, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not absurd to do that. Yeah. However, it is defended because we can play queen takes and then mm -hmm. queen d8 after queen e8. And with the rook on d d7 and the queen on d8, it's pretty solid. Mm -hmm. All right, but that is totally a variation that you should analyze if you have this position because you got to look at your forcing mm -hmm. moves. Okay, I did. I just didn't couldn't get anything. I'm just telling you, it's like... normal to suggest that. Okay. That's all. And I'm don't saying. be shy. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And it would be normal if you're playing a game to analyze that. Okay. You know? All right. Good. Yeah. What are you talking about, Pam? I would think you had to take one of the knights. Yeah, oh. she's suggesting. This. Yeah, yeah. All right, but this is a rule that my dad has. Mm -hmm. When it's a6, b5. Oh, yeah. a4. a4. Exclam. <laughs> it is vital to break up the enemy defenses. a4, exclam. <laughs> now, he played queen e5, but we're going to have to look at some variations, huh? Queen takes a4 is also bad, he says. Because now we can do this and do this. Oh, it's I thought it was going to be queen e8, but it's queen e6. <laughs> but notice that he deflected the queen away. So now we do all the stuff that you wanted, and the queen can't take and defend this way. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's good to look at the forcing moves. Even if it doesn't work now, maybe we can make it work, you know, in some variation. That's how you do it. And that's how you could come up with complex ideas. This is busted. He has to move his rook, right? Mm -hmm. It says here, and then we give him a big check, and then perpetual check. Just kidding, obviously. Come on. <laughs> we could give perpetual check, but this is winning. Your rook is hanging, and if you move it, you get forked. This is actually kind of a common pattern. Hmm. So a lot of forcing moves there, huh? Black has forced this whole variation. Take with the knight, lose your rook. Don't take, you lose a knight. Again, have to take. Now here he could try a different defense. But rook e7 we saw lost by force. What else could we try? Maybe going... See, he doesn't want to allow this, right? He doesn't want to allow him in there. That's why he did this. So rook d8 would allow mm -hmm. it. Rook c7, maybe. But we can do the same thing. It's the same trick. Remember here, fork? Mm -hmm. Same exact trick. Nice. So, yeah, I mean, you could try this, but it lets us in anyway. Maybe here. Also, rook c7 looks pretty good. 
I like that. No, no, you can defend though, right? You can. I didn't see that defense. I thought it was actually over, but we can defend with one move. So this is more forcing then. I don't know. I want to find an, an easy win. Like this actually looks like an easy win, right? I don't want to have to calculate much more than this, right? Why? Why should I? This just wins. You have to go here, and I take your bishop, and now you're just down pawns. You're down two pawns, and you're worse otherwise. But okay, maybe white had some mate over there, but you don't need to see every win, right? If I see one win, that's enough, is what I say. What about b4 after queen e6? Here, b4? Well, oh, defending. That's a tricky defense. We can take a look at that. I like it. Oh, little, little trickster there. Let's see, rook c6 looks pretty obvious, right? Mm -hmm. Rook c6 looks pretty, pretty obvious. Yeah, why not b4 with black? Many people are suggesting this. Many people are saying. Then if you go here, it's the same thing that we saw earlier. I mean, this would only be temporary, right? You attack my rook and I move it and I'm still attacking your rook. Right, in this position here, John John, you, you, a4 is the right idea. Maybe you could play some move like this first or this first. I wouldn't play this because remember we're taking here sometimes, right? We just saw a variation where we take on f6. So if you play bishop back, you give away that option. You won't be able to take the knights and infiltrate with the queen. So that's why a4 is the most flexible move. It keeps all your options open because you want to play a4 all the time anyway. You don't necessarily want to go here. You don't even necessarily want to go here. You might want to put your rook on a1 or whatevs. Or you might want to take here. So this is the most flexible option if you think about it that way. Because you need to play a4 all the time. It's not like, oh, I need my pawn on a2. Let me do something else first. Who cares about that? I mean, a4. Let's see. Any other variations? Ah, oh, yes, yes. After a4, b takes a. Which, you know, I wouldn't really think about that too seriously, right? I would just assume that this is at least uh, what I sacrificed a pawn and look at your king. You know? I mean, I already sacked a piece, but I was already there, so... If I thought that was okay, I would think this is okay. You know what I mean? Rook c6 now? That's an interesting move. Let's see what he says. Well, he actually takes this <clears throat> and then plays rook c6. I know why he took, because if there was a knight here, he could go here and defend a6. So he got rid of the defender, then played this, and now this is looking pretty ugly. I found one way to defend it, though. It's not pretty. That? <laughs> that is not pretty. <laughs> We can even make it worse, right? We go here, then he has to go all the way there. <laughs> Look at that. No, but this is absurd, of course. You can't play the position. Everything's winning. Even like this wins, that wins. This probably wins. Well, maybe he can take, but okay. Ridiculous. Ridicule. See, I wouldn't be too worried about BA in this position anyway. Because A6 is so weak, as John John pointed out. So he played Queen E5. He's trying his best, you know. Bishop e3, not to trade queens. And knight c5. If knight takes d5, looks like a pretty good move. All these captures. Give me a tempo. Give me another tempo. And then give me a third tempo. I'm just trying to kick the queen off of this. Because if we win that, the game's going to definitely be over. We made him with everything. <clears throat> I can't block even. Resigns. This is resigns. So he can't do that. That's unacceptable. Knight c5. A, B. A5. Trying to keep it closed, right? He's trying his best. I mean, black is a piece up, don't forget. We sacked a piece on e6. But obviously white has so many advantages to compensate. But if black can solidify the king's position and develop his bishop and consolidate with his, activate his rooks, consolidate the position, it's playable for black, if, if not better. b6 x clam. Scott, where's Scottish demon go to? <laughs> I don't think I've seen him today. All right, come on. It's missing this moment. B6, double X clam. Trying to get the queen in here. This is the move. That's the move. 
Yeah, I also heard that three tempi is worth a pawn. Like, if you sacrifice a pawn and get three tempi, that's good enough. Like, three tempi for development. But, I don't know, I feel like, obviously it depends on the position, but generally three tempi is better than a pawn, usually. Mm -hmm. It depends on how sharp the position is, yeah. Mm -hmm. He goes bishop e7, question mark. This will lose. He had to play queen h5, only move. Trying to trade queens, obviously no, right? And then bishop e7. But even after rook a1, white has a strong attack, he says. So I wonder what the difference is, right? How come when he played bishop e7 it was wrong, but queen h5 then bishop e7 is better? Let's see what happens after bishop e7. Still rook a1. So the king doesn't want to take the... Um, the that is correct. Because he's trying to hide behind... The yeah, yeah, trying to hide behind shield. the enemy pawn. All right. Exactly. And <clears> in <throat> fact, you were telling me how you did that once. I did many times. <laughs> yes. And then queen b5. Yeah. Rook a6, queen c6 check. We'll we, just see how the game ended here. We do ask where you are when you're not here. We'll say, where's Pam? We haven't seen yes, Pam. Yes, yes. <laughs> I ask that when you are here. <laughs> and he took. What do you think white should do now? Um. Let's see. I think he can just mate with queen c8. Nice. Yeah. Queen c mate, more like. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. <laughs> he resigned after queen <clears throat> c8. But this didn't really answer my main question. How come queen h5 is so much better? Let's try to play the same way. Let's try to play the same way. Queen b5. I mean, I guess it's an extra tempo because your queen's here instead of there if I play queen b5. But why is the queen like so much better here? I don't know. Oh, oh, okay. I, I understand. I understand everything. I figured it all out. I did. I really did. Here, we don't even have to play rook a8. You're not threatening to take this, because I can check you. This this extra tempo is important, because it saves us the tempo here. We don't even have to play rook a8. We can just do anything. Mm -hmm. Like knight here, for example. Get some counterplay. Yeah. Get some counterplay here. Because if you take, I can... Now, check doesn't mate you, but you have to trade queens, which obviously you don't want to do trying to checkmate me so you'd have to waste a tempo to make luft or something where in the game he didn't have to do that because there was nothing like this because mm -hmm. the queen was here oh i see yeah. yes yeah exactly ralph exactly ralph it's not really mate in one but it, it forces the trade of queens yes yeah yeah all right last example from this book yeah, definitely. Hey, you can send me um, a link to your game in a whisper, P. Midris. Or Pi. Midris. Maybe it's it's P, like PP and Pampers. <laughs> and I'm happy to take a look at it. You know, I was watching um, Komsky, mm -hmm. and somebody asked him, like, are you friends with Tigran Petrosian? And Komsky's like, well, you know, I wouldn't say that we're friends, but, you know, we're acquaint we're friendly, mm -hmm. you know, we're acquaintances. And then he's, and then he went on to say, unprovoked, he said, yeah, what Wesley, what Wesley said was out of line and, you really? know. Yes. Yeah. He was like, I don't believe that he was cheating and such. Yeah. I was like, I was like, what? <laughs> I couldn't help but think like, what? He was 110% cheating. <clears throat> Ridiculous. Yeah, that was crazy. I couldn't believe he said that. Yeah, I'm surprised by that too. Especially since Komsky thinks everyone's cheated. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, um, you know, chess.com doesn't, um, if anything, they err on the side of caution. Right. They won't ban people mm -hmm. when it's close. So, so you if know. they ban it, it's like 110%. And they looked at the issue pretty hard. But yeah. Well, b4 would have been similar to b takes a4, John John. You know, except you don't even win a pawn. Your, your a6 would be too weak there. 
All right, so mm-hmm. is this the right position? It looks right. Cause hey, it's Squire. Yeah, you know, it's obvious I don't cheat market sands. <laughs> I mean, like, no. <laughs> That's true. I don't know whether to be complimented or not complimented. <laughs> Either way. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I don't cheat. <laughs> Every time one side makes such a sacrifice, he must take into account a host of small details, which influence whether the sacrifice is sound. One little thing out of place, and the assessment changes completely. This is some guys I never heard of. I'm just going to leave it blank because nobody's heard of these people. Mm. With his last move, White sacrificed a piece on d5. But there's a big difference from previous examples. The bishop on the C, uh, is on c1 instead of g5. Uh, usually the bishop was here. Or at least it could go there. Like in the Kasparov example, where he did play this later. And then he took here, remember? Mm-hmm. But here he can't, because it's blocked. So, the bishop's too passive and can only watch the attack. So this is maybe not very good. Hey, Chesty40. Yeah, you know, I'm obviously very happy Biden will be president instead of Trump. That is true. So I'm pretty happy. <laughs> My favorite Pam quote, because Pam yeah. asked, how do you cheat? Uh, my favorite Pam quote was when she was playing my dad. Yeah. And, uh, you know, my dad took all her pieces. <laughs> and then at the end of the game, uh, Pam in chat says, dang, I was cheating too. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Pam. <laughs> really funny stuff. <laughs> Even stronger than King D8, however, is knight, uh, Bishop E7, Knife F5, Knight B6. Now, we saw the similar idea in the Kasparov, or what's it Kasparov? Anyways, it was takes here, king H, king f8, bishop h6, but again, bishop h6 is illegal here. Yeah. So this is less strong than the other example where we could take and play bishop h6. Now it takes king f8. Oh, you can go back, but okay, I can get my rook out on the g file, and I'm not getting crushed like in the other example. Yes. So, okay, even bishop e7 was good. He played king d8. Also good. Check. Knight b6. Bishop e3. So, yeah, our bishop doesn't get to go here and harass the king side at all. It's just sort of putting a little pressure. Mm-hmm. Although this is a threat, actually, to take and go here. But it's certainly less active than in previous examples. d5 x clam. Great move by black, stopping the threat of captures and push, because then there's no attack on the rook. Nice. Dubious move here. Anyways, he took, and black's better. I mean, black's a piece up for very minimal compensation. Zero pawns, even. Okay, his king is a little weak, and white is the bishop here, but it's it's not going to be too bad. I guess white could try to take and take here, though, but even still, black should be doing well. So you can't just sacrifice on d5 all the time is the moral of the story. <laughs> you got to have active pieces and have a continuation with forcing moves to back it up, or at least land on a position where you have a lot of compensation. Like, remember when I said... All your pawns are weak, and you've got a bad pawn structure, and, and, and your, your white squares are weak, and your rook is trapped in the corner. Like, if I if you keep ha- adding up all of these positional advantages, you know, it might be worth the sacrifice. But here it's, it's you know, pretty fluid position for black, but not so bad. Have you Mm-mm. watched that clip of the magician drawing against a bunch of strong chess players? No. Mm-mm. But that does sound funny. Petrosian wasn't cheating. He was just looking at the weather app on his computer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, also, my dad, a lot of times, is, like, texting and looking at his phone. But then he plays all bad moves, so he's probably not cheating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously he was cheating. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> well, Pam, the computer doesn't, like, know what you're going to do. It just calculates everything. Because it looks at literally a million positions per second. So, I mean... It doesn't have to know what you're going to do. It just sees everything, <laughs> pretty much. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not 100% sure how computers a- analyze chess. I'm not a programmer. Mm-hmm. But I know that it, you know, looks at forcing. It's programmed to look at forcing moves. It prunes variations that go nowhere as well. 
So, but I don't know the ins and outs of how computers work, honestly, mm -hmm. as far as with chess engines or computers like on the, your desktop, for example. I have no idea how anything works. I'm just sitting here using them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess since Stockfish isn't an open source, it's probably right. easy to see see how it's working. Exactly. If you're interested. It is kind of an interesting topic. All right, so we finished this chapter. The oh, first okay, chapter we did. about attacking the king. All right. That was pretty interesting, I thought. And maybe it was a little tough. But I found it. I found the last part with this, these D five sacrifices extremely instructive and useful for me personally. Yeah. Because I'm usually on the black side of those structures, mm -hmm. and uh, it's actually very rare in my games that people play knight D five and sacrifice, because, um, well, I, you know, I play usually weak players who don't want to calculate <laughs> or figure anything out. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh yeah, I got your link by the way, Pi Midras, and I will check it out after the stream. But, um, well, I think we can just go ahead and try out the new one. If All right, yeah, we can to. start out the new book. Yeah, we're just going to try out, um, there's a book by John Nunn called Understanding Chess Middle Games. We're going to just kind of look a little bit at what John has to say. <laughs> yeah, none greater. <laughs> <laughs> so we could just start at the first one, huh? Yeah. Maybe we'll just look at one example because they're pretty short and, and we already, you know, looked at a bunch of yeah, examples. Yeah, I agree with that. Today. I just wanted to get a sense for, um, I felt like maybe the Panchenko was a little bit too advanced for me to follow That's so many variations. That's what Ralph said, too. Variations. Oh, you well, felt... not specifically too advanced for you, but... You know, oh, for you. <laughs> that it was advanced. I mean, for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I feel like um, I am learning from it but there might be a better book out there, so I'm just kind of on the fence about it. So anyway, it can't hurt just to look at this other book. So that's what we're about to do. And then you guys can give feedback if you think the material we've been going over the last couple of days is good, or there's only going to be a little sampling, I think, of this book here. Yeah. But. All right, mm -hmm. so let's see. What's the first thing called? Advantage of the Exchange. Mm-hmm. All right, let's set it up. Yeah, I've tried Puzzle Rush. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very good, but I've done it a whole lot. I haven't done much Puzzle Rush myself. Yeah. But uh, maybe I should. I like, you know, puzzles. Mm, I do like puzzles. I'm just not very good. It's just the way it is. Some things will never change. That's right. <laughs> See, that's, I was talking about this the other day. We have all these terrible songs in our memory, mm -hmm. and most people just waste that space in their brain. But me, I'm always trying to use the terrible songs as jokes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So it's very, like, it's very green of me, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the songs are, it's fun to have, like, the bad songs. My brother and I do that a lot where we'll sing mm -hmm. to each other, like, a really bad song. You know, bad falsetto or whatever. Right, right. Mm -hmm. That's the way to do it. Yeah. You got a 1600 in puzzles. Nice. Mm -hmm. 1600 is pretty solid, the suspenser. Mm hmm. I never knew what GM stood for. General manager. Yeah, 24 is my high score, John John. And I got that recently. I was at 23 for a while. I need to. I haven't practiced. I haven't done Puzzle Rush lately, but I need to. All yeah, right. I got 24. <laughs> 24 is pretty solid. You ought to look at my profile. I mean, I've done thousands of puzzles That's and thousands true. of games. I've probably played like, I don't even think they track as many games as I've done. There's no way. Because it says I've done like 50 something thousand games on Jessica. I know I've played more than that because it was 50,000 like a while back. So it's just the max, I guess. Maybe. All right, so here's a position <laughs> from Svidler Timofeyev. Like that, son. Yeah, it is. I think <laughs> I think that I've done more than that. Yeah. <laughs> Ralph, pretty sure. Let's see what Nunn has to say okay. about this. This is Svidler Timofeyev from 2009. It's white to play. Okay. Russian championship. And do, you, do you know who's won more Russian championships than Svidler? More than Svidler? Yeah, who's won more Russian championships than Svidler? Um, um, Tapalov? Grisha? Is Grisha even Russian? <laughs> yes. Oh, well, Tapalov is Bulgarian. Oh, okay. So wasn't a great guess. 
Um, I don't know. Nobody. Nobody. Hey, nobody. you're tricking me. You again. should know that Fiddler did. <laughs> <laughs> Kangaroo said either nobody or tall. Oh, I didn't have the right yes. players. Okay, so white to move, and then we're talking about exchanges or something. The advantage of the exchange. Okay. So we're already up the exchange. Hooray! White has a whole extra exchange, and indeed stands to win. But in practice, such positions are easily misplayed. You can already tell that the English is much better here than in the other book, because that guy doesn't speak English, it's just translated. Oh, yeah. And none is English. Mm, true. Svidler gives a good demonstration of the correct method. Rooks require open files to develop yeah, their maximum activity. Currently, there are no such files, so one of White's goals is to create one. Note that Black is not without some positional compensation in the form of his active bishop and secure a central knight. A typical mistake for players with extra material is to waste time and assume that the position will win itself. If Black had enough time, he would develop counterplay by advancing his queenside pawns, for example, c5, rook c8, and b5, which would make White's task harder. Therefore, White should, without taking unnecessary risks, seek to develop active play for his rooks without delay. So you guys want g5, but then as Kangaroo points out, I mean, as John John points out, h5 would shut it down. So that's why he didn't do that, I think. He played f4 x clam. This defends the attacked h pawn. Uh, while at the same time preparing to open up the file by f5, note that g5 question mark h5, as John John points out, is wrong. Because if black follows up with g6, the king side pawn structure will be completely blocked, and white will be unable to open a file for his rooks. So indeed, f4. John John really on the, on the ball there. Mm -hmm. Rook d8. Rook df1. This is simpler than playing f5 takes takes knight f4. There's no need to enter complications. So rook f1 obviously stops knight f4 in this variation. Mm -hmm. Rook df1 first, preparing his pawn break. Yeah, okay. Yeah. c5, f5. The threat is to take, takes, and then push. Then if you play h5 like before, now we have time for g6 because you don't have an f-pawn anymore. Mm-hmm. So that's the idea. So black has to take some action. <laughs> Had to change the, you know, the page there. Knight b4. So black tries to get some counterplay. Timo is not going to go out into that, into that knight. How does it go? <laughs> he won't do it. Go gently. Yeah, he won't go into gently. Into that good knight. Into that good knight. <laughs> he, he would, good bishop, but not good knight. Takes takes and then queen f2 another typical strategy when material ahead is to play for exchanges after trading and taking on d3 rook d1 the rooks are also exchanged which would leave white's other rook which would allow white's other rook to penetrate on the c file with deadly effect and this is another point that i tell all my students whenever you have a material balance where you have more rooks than the opponent mm -hmm. like for example you're up the exchange or maybe you're down two pieces for a rook either way if you have more rooks than your opponent you want to have the only rook so you'd like to trade rooks and be the only rook and then you can tear them up with your rook and they can't defend as easily mm -hmm. or get counterplays easily so that's kind of a smart thing to do okay yeah. that's good <laughs> I like uh, the suspenser's quote there from Maurice Ashley. Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw that. You yes. don't know what your IQ is, John John? I've never <laughs> taken an IQ test myself. No, me neither. So he didn't trade. He went back. Queenie 3 exclam. It's not bad to exchange on E6, but White finds an even stronger move. Delaying the exchange give white, gives white the extra option of f6, right? Trying to target h6 there, breaking mm -hmm. open the black king side. b3, always do this. So if takes here, you get to tuck the king safe in the corner, he says, like Rudy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gotta tuck it in there. <laughs> Queen b4, 
a3, and just rook d1. f takes, f takes, rook g3, keeps the rook on the open f file, and prepares to break into black's kingside with g5, and then g6. However, Spiddler's method is good enough. Spiddler keeps it cool here with rook d1. He figures he already got in his pawn break, so he's going to win as long as he doesn't give black anything, which he's right. Yes, uh, queen... Sorry, I lost my place. I was reading chat there. Looks like queen c5. This font is like a little weird, you know? It's like a little curly font. So it looks like queen e5, but mm -hmm. obviously he didn't do that. Hang his queen. D4. Yeah, I don't queen like D5. the font. Yeah, the it's... font needs to be a little yeah. bit clearer, in mm -hmm. my opinion. It's like too fancy. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Oh, you fancy, huh? <laughs> Rook g3. Black to play here. A change of direction. White takes aim at the b3 pawn. And so forces black to exchange queens in an unfavorable circumstance. This is the only way he could save his pawn. Oh, I see, yeah. He doesn't have to fear this move trying to go in here because we can block it. So he goes EF, GF. Takes. Black takes a pawn, but now he has a pass D pawn because there's no E pawn anymore. Also, he could take this, right? Mm -hmm. But he just pushes the pawn. And then takes it. Take it till you make it. So here, if he takes the pawn, then you lose your bishop because you, you got to take them. Um, so if, now, however, white's not really threatening this to be immediately winning because then we'll just go here. So I'm, I'm not really going to push unless you take, and black's not going to take because of push. So that's why he took the time to take this pawn. Oh, I see. He doesn't have to worry about captures, and he doesn't want to push. So bishop d7, and that's now actually threatening the pawn. Right, yeah. So rook e3. Rook e6. Never play f6 is meant by e6 x clam. And then the d pawn will queen if you take stuff. Like, for example, this. You have to give up your bishop. Or the other way. And it's the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you you can't even give up your rook. It's it's a queen. Oh no, you can. You can. What am I talking about? You can go here. <laughs> but not the most beautiful move to play. Mm -hmm. Rook e6. Rook d d3. I'm gonna check my text real quick. Now he's gonna infiltrate. And, but, I mean, the game's over. They're just not resigning because they're getting to move 40. King d2, and now it is move 40, so he resigned. Rook c7 to b7 cannot be prevented. Always play king b1 and push him, maybe. Yes, Ralph knows all of the things to do. <laughs> Definitely. So, yeah, that was a great example of how to win an exchange up. You have to open up the files, obviously, is what he's talking about. But also, he stopped counterplay, right? Rook df1 was a really nice preparatory move. Because in this variation, knight f4 would have been strong. So rook df1 prevents that. And then black tried his best to get counterplay over here on this side of the board. And weaken white's king. But yes, uh, even though this move to exchange queens would lose a pawn, uh, white's king is, is obviously loose. So trading queens is, is a, a, a benefit. And as well as the fact that he also gets to trade rooks in this variation with rook d1. You can't avoid the rook trade because you're going to get forked. So you'd have to do this, but then I'll win easily with my rook coming in and taking all your stuff. So this is not acceptable either. So he had to try this. But then uh, we saw that Svidler, he already got in his pawn break. And so he just stops counterplay and he'll win on the king side when at his leisure. That's why he played nice, improving, solid moves here. And then the rest was just technique. Although I guess the whole thing was technique. because you know, <laughs> It's up in exchange from the start. Hmm. All right, so good job by Spiddler. So what did you think? Did you want to get some games in now? Or maybe look at another example? Um, why don't we do... I think we maybe won't, won't end with games. Okay. Because um, I actually need to get to go somewhere um but
Well, we could do another example. All right, one more example. That way we'll get a bit more sense of the book, and then we'll figure out who we're going to uh, raid. Ben is streaming tonight, um, but I think at 8. Isn't that, is that right? I don't know. Pretty sure at 8. I don't know what day it is right now. <laughs> is it Saturday? Today's Saturday, I believe. <laughs> yeah, yesterday was a Blitz event, so it must, have, it must be Saturday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't get to watch his stream yesterday because I, you know, was working. And then when I got home, it was done because he started early. Mm-hmm. Sad for me. I didn't see the end of it. I just saw a little bit of it. All right. White to move. Let's see. So white should be an exchange up, which he is for a pawn. This is Carlson Ivanchuk from 2008. There it is. Yes, I mean, most people are a big fan of, uh, of old Chucky. And Magnus, you know, you take, can take him or leave him, I guess. What's the most appropriate time to apply a pawn break? Yeah, that's a good question, mm -hmm. Chesty. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll tell you what, you know, usually a pawn break implies that the position will open. So if you want the position to be more open, that's a good time to make a pawn break. But pawn breaks, you know, they have to be evaluated very carefully because they're not only a pawn push, which make all pawn pushes are permanent. You can't take a pawn push back. But pawn breaks also imply an exchange is at least possible because mm -hmm. you're attacking your opponent's pawn and they're attacking your pawn so it's it's both a pawn move and a, a capture or potential capture and so those really change the characters the characteristics of the game so that you this is an example then from the pawn break section no no oh. that was just a question oh that was your that question was oh okay what what is the name of this section that we're doing the ex exchange oh it's still in that's the why exchange. he's an exchange up here oh, okay and he's got an extra rook for for a knight my favorite player is Ivanchuk. Yeah, Ivanchuk's pretty mm -hmm. cool. All right, so Nun says, here's a trickier case. Black has a pawn for the exchange, and in addition, white's bishop is blocked by its own pawns, leaving him with almost no dark square control. Moreover, there is no immediate prospect of white opening a file for his rook. Objectively, the position is equal. C5 x clam. Hanging a pawn. Carlson decides to offer a second pawn in order to free his bishop. This is a good decision. Otherwise, black could have played knight c5 to blockade that. Hey, smothered mate in f7. And uh, then slowly prepare an attack by advancing the kingside pawns. As before, it's essential for white to undertake positive action... Waiting would simply allow black to improve his position without hindrance. And that's one thing about being up in exchange is that you have the same number of pieces as your opponent if you're up the exchange. It's not like being up a whole piece. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you do need concrete action to make your piece better, to prove that your rook is better. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm one of the, your two favorite people in the whole world? Wow. Very <clears throat> nice. <clears throat> you must not know a lot of people, I guess. Aww. C5. Knight takes C5. And bishop c4. So now his bishop's really good. Mm -hmm. At the cost of a pawn, white's bishop has become active and bears down on black's position. In particular, the c5 knight cannot easily switch to the king side since e6 is covered by the bishop. Saying you can't go over here and go for mate. Okay. Bishop g5. Queen e2 x clan. Queen h6. So Ivanchuk's getting his pieces active on the dark squares here. Rook a, d1. It's important not to allow the black bishop to become active at e3 or d2. So Carlson's covering those with his queen and rooks. Um, the inactivity of this bishop is the main defect of black's position. And if this problem could be solved, black would have a clear advantage. So put your bishop there, right? Mm -hmm. Even if it's not winning a knight with a fork, that would be great. Clearly, black would be much better. Just two pawns for an exchange and very active. Uh, let's see. So he goes rook f8. A5. 
four, b six. Black is trying, or white is trying rather, to play a five b six and undermine the d pawn. So this is a good time to play a pawn break. Whoever was asking that, mm -hmm. that's a good reason too. So b six preventing that. Wait, what was the reason though? I'm sorry. To undermine this pawn. Oh, to undermine. Okay. Yeah, he wants to go here and here, so this is gone. Oh, I see now. And then his rook will be really good on that sixth rank. Okay. So he doesn't allow that. So says no thanks. G3. Denying the bishop dark squares and preparing king g2 to consolidate white's king's position. Yes, X clan b6 exactly, Ralph. So g3 is a good move. g3 is like b6 in reverse, sort of, you know. Yeah. Queen h3. Stopping king g2. Queen g2. Obviously, he's not ready to trade. Always repeat. But Carlson's still trying to win this. Knight d7, dubious. The start of a poor plan involving the transfer of his knight to the king side. Now let's go around here, maybe take this and play this, for example. Or even like this, that, this, and that. That'd be good. If you get four moves in a row, you win the queen. Nice. It's unlikely that black's attack will be strong enough to force mate, and removing the knight leaves black's queen side vulnerable. He can just move his queen back and forth like he'd already been doing, and that'll maintain equality. Rook a1, x clam. Nice. Carlson knows what, he, what he's doing here. Who would have thought? Since rook is 5 and queen is 9, is it worth trading two rooks for a queen early game? Well, usually two rooks are better than a queen, yes. Usually queen and pawn is about equal to two rooks. But it does depend on the position, as Ralph said. Because, uh, you know, in a middle game with a lot of loose pieces, the queen is stronger. In an end game with no loose pieces, the rooks are stronger by a mile. Rook a1. Exclam. Transferring the rook to a2 is an excellent plan, since it's useful in defense along the second rank and supports a possible a5 push. Defending and attacking. Two for one there. Here, rook a2. Knight f6. King g2 question mark. Bishop e6 x clam is more accurate. King g2 question mark because... Well, knight h5 question mark. He missed his chance to play f4 x clam. After bishop e6, f... G, H, G, knight, H, 5, bishop, G, 4, sacrifice, forces a draw for black, etc. <clears throat> hey, Jay Cheatham, how's it going? I was just wondering if I could try this. No, obviously not, right? Look. So that's why bishop e6 is more precise, because if f4, g4, you can't sacrifice and fork me, like we just saw. But he played king g2 first, now f4, g4 is not playable because of this. So bishop e6 was more accurate because of that f4 break, but both sides missed that. He played knight h5. Oh yeah, hey, oh you already said hey to j. Yeah. Hey, Jay. <laughs> I did. Knight h5, question mark, knight d5. Knight takes, bishop takes. Now white is clearly better. Black's attack is not dangerous, and white has good chances on the queen side by playing a5 or attacking the backward c pawn with rook c2. Not rook c1 because it's hanging. So he goes for bishop f4. Obviously, that's not acceptable. So, dang it, I always do that. So, uh, he goes for queen f2. Fe and bishop takes. Still looks pretty scary for the king, but he's got everything under control. There's no forcing move to break in. d5 question mark. This tactic opens up the position and allows white's rooks to break out. Rook f7, simple move, was better. Although after bishop b7, 
White can easily improve his position, for example, with this maneuver and rook e4. I mean, he makes it seem like this is not winning by force, but White's much better. That's sort of what I'm inferring from his notes. Yeah. So he tries a little tactic here, d5. Bishop takes d5, bishop g3, and knight f4. See, that's the point of playing d5. Now he gets to win the piece back. However, he only succeeded in opening up the position, which should help white. So even though his tactic didn't lose material, it was the wrong idea, because it opens up the position for white. Rook c, e2, x clam. The e pawn is doomed. Rook f5, g4. Or rook e8, f4. Taking advantage of the pin. So now it's losing, and he did lose. We'll see how the game ended here. Now, you know, he has to win back his pawn, but now he gets to trade queens, and now white's king is not going to get checkmated, of course. Now this is hanging, so he has to defend the knight and the rook, of course. But then, of course, we're really happy to trade those off, right, as we discussed earlier. Mm -hmm. And then Magnus can win this in his sleep. King d2 avoiding all checks with the knight and resigns. Yeah, this was definitely a much more difficult example than the other one because obviously black had a pawn for it and the position are started closed. But c5 is a very important move, activating his bishop and trying to keep the position open for his rooks. Yeah. Definitely. And also Ivanchuk doing that tactic at the end only helped Carlson. But also an interesting moment was here. He should have played bishop e6 and meet f4 with g4. Instead he played king g2 allowing f4 and Ivanchuk missed it and played knight h5 instead, which um, he was still much worse or losing after, probably just much worse. But they were already in time pressure around here. Cause, you know, I can see the move numbers. It said like 35 and whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I know exactly. They, they must have been in time pressure. Oh, yeah. But all right, that's it for this example. And we already finished their short section, so we already finished the first section. Oh, okay. See the second section is here. Well, we can talk about it. So maybe I'll flip through there, too. Well, I thought that, you know, this book is definitely has less variations in calculation required. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when mm -hmm. the variation ends, we don't have to analyze to be sure, right? Like we did in the other book. Yeah. So it's a little bit more straightforward. Um, you know, the ideas are, you know, at, at least in this section, it, it's a little bit more vague the ideas mm -hmm. but um you know like, this, like the other book was very specific in that you're doing like 95 sacrifice or sacrificing yeah, on d5 right and this one is more broad um, mm -hmm. but that could be easier to comprehend hmm. okay you know for me it, it's easier to go through this book than it is for the other book as the you know the, as a teacher because it's not as complex yeah and i don't have to like figure stuff out Right. And also Nunn's writing is easier because he speaks English. Oh, yeah, I didn't even think about that. All right, well, I'll pick more in the book, too. And I like that it's uh, we have it on Kindle. That's so true. We can, <laughs> I don't have to hold a book like a caveman. <laughs> yeah, and I can put yeah. it on my iPad even if it's easier oh, or may be not cool. be easier. But then that'd you can have cool. it like on a stand. Oh, yeah, like you. this stand? See? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't, that. <laughs> I don't have a stand as nice as that. No, no, it's a Nintendo Switch stand. Oh, okay. See? <laughs> Maybe you can see it. Mm -hmm. A little branding here. Hey, buddy, what's up? I'm going to go down to Bambinoli's and get fries. Do you want anything? Um, no, but I would say that this is good. We actually need to go. So go ahead and get the food and then come back and like, do it all quickly. Okay. Then we're going to pack up and leave, okay? okay? All right, thanks, sweetie. I don't play Animal Crossing, actually. That's probably the only, like, triple A game that I don't play. Like, every other big name game on the Switch I play. But I'm all about, like, fighting and <laughs> competing. And Animal Crossing is, uh, you know, it's not about that stuff, right? It's just about building a nice island. It's like Minecraft, you know, doing little oh, chores. Yeah. <laughs> doing chores. <laughs> yeah, I'm anti-chores. Right, in real life or in, in video games. Definitely. That's just amazing. A lot of people like, um, do, like these kind of games. So you play some? With chores? Not really. <laughs> no. Oh. I mean, I play RPGs where you have to run around and do stuff, mm -hmm. like, and then piece stuff together. So it's sort of like chores. <laughs> but Animal Crossing is like you're building a house, then you're making a, you know, building a, planting a tree, and then you're cutting the tree for wood, and then you're using the wood. 
So it's like, you know, I don't care about mm. all that. <laughs> yeah. I like strategy games. Yeah. But um, I like battling. Fight, fight, fight. Yeah, I recently played poker. Man, was that fun. Yeah, poker is good. Are you, have you been playing it recently? Or? No, well, no. I remember you, you were playing it for weeks. a while. Well, I only played a handful of times. No, so I want to keep playing. I've just been too busy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fun. I like poker. Poker is fun. I wouldn't think that it would be your best game, though, honestly. Mm-hmm. No offense. But yeah. it's, it's a lot about, like, intuition and sort of, like, feeling out the opponent. Mm-hmm. And I feel like you're more, like, concrete. You know, Maybe. You're like when things are more like spelled out and you can figure it out by force rather than, yeah. you know, inferring information and gleaning information. We'll see. I did really well, though, when I played. Mm-hmm. Last couple of times I was crashing it. <laughs> nice. Well, because there was one, like you could tell, but these weren't professionals. Right. You know. Oh, yeah, obviously. Professionals <laughs> are, are tough. I've played 11.4 thousand Blitz games. Hmm. So is it going to be a CDL or what? CDL. To raid, I mean. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah, let me see. That's a good point. I, I have to actually head on down the road. Karen might as well face it. She's addicted to Blitz. To Blitz? <laughs> <laughs> I prefer a long game, though. But yes. Yeah, I've played a lot of chess. It's true. <laughs> Well, we're going to raid somebody, and you guys come back to Ben's stream at 8. Now, who are we going to raid? Look, we have almost 100. We have 90. Nine! <laughs> nine, nine. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's CDL, as previously discussed. Um, got somebody playing Among Us, which I also do want to play. I think it looks really fun. I've heard you uh, express interest, but yeah, I just haven't been, really followed through. I haven't been. My bro- my uh, sons are going to train me on it. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, that is a lot of games. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Among Us. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Among Us sleep. <laughs> I like it, though. Yeah. All right, so raid. All right, I've got my raid. I like this stream a lot. Me too. So you guys, even if you don't want to keep doing chess and go over with the raid, make and then us, leave after. Leave after. <laughs> We're just, it's all about us. Yeah, make us look good. Making us Come look on. good. Be cool, you guys. <laughs> all right, bye guys. Bye, Love you. Thank See you, you for coming. See you tomorrow. Uh, bye. <laughs>